everybody so I'm here at Atmosphere Resort in uh, Dawin in the Philippines and we're trying to get a little bit of muck diving uh, macro diving in here this is one of the good uh, critter areas in uh, the Philippines So right over my shoulder here you can see Apple Island, uh, that's where you can go out for day trips to um, see turtles and sea snakes and everything, it's really nice out there, good wide angle, but more local here is just the macro along the shore here, so there's a bunch of dive sites up and down um, here, mostly pretty the same, you come out over some seagrass beds and then drop down into some sand, a nice steep bank and you're at 50 60 feet pretty quickly one of the things I'm trying to do on this trip is to get some snooting work done I've got one of the backscatter snoot setups and I tried it once when I was in Fiji uh, and then the next day my snoot got dropped overboard by one of the guys on the boat unfortunately but that's just the way it happens sometimes so now I'm trying it again and I'm gonna try some different types of snooting, some a little bit of extreme snooting and some control the light and reduce the, uh, increase the shadows, add, add some nice negative space and that kind of thing. Great to see you all again. We've had a couple of good days of diving. Uh, so far we've seen five species of octopus, which is pretty amazing. A wonderpus, uh, several wonderpus actually, a couple of mimics, a uh, blue ring octopus, a reef, day reef octopus they call them, they're the big ones. And um, what well, they're calling a palm coat, uh, octopus. I'm not sure what that one is, but it's a small brown one. It wasn't very interesting and it was pretty unhappy about us uh, chasing across the reef. So we let it go uh, down into a burrow and left it. Um, but yeah, it's been great to see so many species of octopus and really enjoying the diving here so far. We also seen um, several kinds of, uh, sorry, several pairs of flamboyant cuttlefish and nudibranchs, uh, lots of frogfish. They've got a, you know, they have a lot of frogfish here, different kinds. Right now they're they're mostly kind of small. Uh, we've seen we've there's one or two larger ones, but they're um, still growing. So uh, later in the year there'll be some some big guys out there, but for the moment it's mostly some small stuff. And then just other reef critters that are there, you know, the shrimp, the crabs and that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of exploring to do, a lot of interesting behaviors and it's been uh, a great couple of days so far. Yeah, one of the interesting behaviors we saw uh, 
or we were spent some time with a wonderpus was it just went up into the seagrass and it stood up on its arms and legs and just stood there so I was swaying like a piece of the seagrass in the in the seagrass beds it was pretty cool it went slightly greenish as well uh, I mean they're brown and yellow for the most part but it went slightly greenish and just sat there and swayed and kind of seemed to be like surveying is there anything out there then it dropped down moved across on the sand below the seagrass leaves again and then came up and did it again uh, that's always just spending some time watching octopus behavior or any kind of critter behavior is always really cool uh, we actually spent i think about 40 minutes with it we just we found it as we were dropping in it was like 20 feet of water and the rest of the crew just they went off and did whatever they're doing and my buddy and i just sat and watched it took some photographs but also just enjoyed watching the behavior because that's part of being out here in the in the ocean you don't have to get a photograph every single time of everything just spend some time seeing how the animals actually behave and what they do how they hunt it, that was a pretty cool dive so yeah it's a lot of fun here and we're having some great times seeing critters again after the long covid lockdown all right i'll catch you later and um i hope to enjoy some more dives All right, I thought I'd talk a little bit about the kind of shooting I'm doing here. But around here, it's just shooting macro and getting down in the muck. One of the things that happens when you're in that kind of environment is you get a lot of backscatter or you get unwanted light going everywhere. So I've been using this uh, snoot system from um, backscatter in Monterey. You have the light here. You can use this as, as, a, as a focus light as well and everything, or just a, a flashlight. And then you have the snoot that sits on top and just pops on. And then you have these uh, light modifiers. One's got oval shapes, one's circular, and you can just pop them in here and let different routes of light come out. So you point it down here or point it from the side and just change the amount of light go that goes into it like that. I should probably do a review of this at some point, but for right now, I'm just showing you, this is one of the systems I use. So this allows you to reduce the amount of light that's going in and uh, just focus on the subject rather than having light going everywhere. And then my other strobe is this um, Icolite 161. This is what I use for wide angle as well. Uh, so obviously if you just use this, you're gonna have light blowing everywhere. And so it's a lot more difficult to control where the light goes with these strobes. You have um, power up and down if you're shooting when you're shooting macro, but sorry when you're shooting manual. But I prefer to just I created these little light modifiers that reduce the amount of light that comes out and stop it from spreading everywhere. So I can focus the light more on where I want it to go from the front, from the side, and slightly above that kind of thing. Uh, and these are just some um, plastic fittings that I found that help do that. And I found this totally reduces the amount of backscatter you get because the light's not coming in front of the subject too much and your lens so you can have something say this is your subject and you can just light right on the side of it or just slightly to the front whereas if you do this you can see lights just going to spread all around it it also helps to both this the snoot system and this help to modify where the light's going so you don't have light everywhere and that's what's important for the macro trying to focus the light on the subject and not have too much light in the background. Obviously, you don't want to do that for every single shot, but uh, to add some variety and to control your subject's uh, lighting is really important. And this is a good little tool for that. Uh, so far, I've had pretty good success with it. As I said, I think I might try and do a review of the, of the backscatter thing as well um, later in the year. But for now, that's what I'm using, the, the two systems and we'll see how they work out. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about how I set up the lighting for a couple of my images. For the first uh, couple of images, I'm gonna look at the blue ring octopus images that I took. For the first one of those, where it's sitting on top of the algae leaf, I had the strobes out in front of the camera and they were both pointing in from the left and the right. So they're across 
uh, lighting to the side of the octopus. For the second one, I had the left strobe uh, uh, closer than the right strobe, and I turned the lighting down a little bit since I was much closer. And I did this way I created the shadow to the back so that you had some idea of texture and direction in the image of the octopus. Both images were taken where the strobes were my plain strobes with the lighting modifiers that I created that I showed earlier so that the light would just hit the edge of the octopus and not go spreading out to the back of them. For the next three images, one's a small baby frogfish and then the two uh, flamboyant cuttlefish. I used the backscatter snoot to do this. For the first one the, of the frogfish, I had the one of the smaller circles of light and I illuminated it directly from the top and I tried to get just the top of the frogfish face illuminated and let the light spread away from that. Then for the two flamboyants, I had the light a little bit brighter using a slightly larger circle and had it coming straight down on top of them, illuminating the eyes and letting the rest of the body to the front and back uh, separate away into the shadows. You can see the difference between the two images. In the second one, I had a larger circle of light and illuminated nearly the whole body and let the surroundings be dark. And in the first of the flamboyants, I was just uh, using a smaller circle than the second one and illuminating just the part of the body. These are conscious choices to try to create a different type of lighting, a different type of look, depending on the image. And I think the backscatter snoot is really useful for doing that. In the final image of this series, there's a giant frogfish that I use a, with a wide angle setup. And here you, the strobes were my plain strobes, just as I would normally use for wide angle. This is more normal kind of wide angle shooting with the strobes pointing forward and those snoots on them. And what you'd expect to do if you were trying to capture a reef scenic or a larger uh, part of the reef. So you can see the difference in the lighting choices between doing some tight macro shots and wide angle types of lighting. Okay, for this sap sucking slug, the Stiliger onatus, which I took in Dumaghetti as well, this is a super tiny slug. I used the, my large uh, 2x diopter to, to capture the images. In the first image, I'm using my regular strobes with the snooted edges and lighting it up from the sides. And in the second image, I'm using the backscatter snoot looking straight down on top. You can see the lighting is different. You get slightly different um, type of lighting f shooting from the side than shooting from the top. Uh, but you also get less light in the background on the snooted one using the backscatter snoot versus using my reduced light strobes where there's still some spread of light to the back. Which one you prefer is up to you. I, I like them both. They're just slightly different flavors of lighting to get some different, different looks. In this comparison, you can directly see how the light will be different depending on whether you shoot from the, the, with the light from the side or whether you shoot with the light from the top. And it gives you an idea of how the snoot from backscatter will um, affect the light quality versus using regular strobes. Next, we have a few images where I've just used the backscatter snoot to illuminate the subject and let the light just fade away um, from the subject. There's nothing else but the snoot uh, lighting up straight from above. Finally, I've combined the snoot with a little bit of side lighting from one of my strobes. I just turned the power down like three or four stops on the, on the unit and moved it so it would just illuminate the back behind the front of the nudibranchs. I wanted the back to have a little bit of light on it so you could see them without having the all the light fade away completely but i wanted to make sure that there was light from above illuminating the rhinophores at the front of the nudibranchs okay everybody here are a few images to close out the video i hope you've enjoyed it if you have any comments on the images or want to let me know what your favorite one was just um, add some comments to the section below the video and I will do my best to answer any questions that you might have. I hope you've enjoyed that and we'll see you in the next one.
Don't forget to like and subscribe if this video is useful to you. Thanks for watching.